So hi hello everyone welcome to the channel and today I will show you how to delineate a catchment or the watershed using digital elevation model DEM in RGIS. So let's get started. So now let me show you how to add a DEM file into RGIS. So go to the option called add data. Go to the option called add data. Click add data. Now choose your DEM file. So I already have imported my DEM file. So to add your DEM file click this option called add. So to perform our watershed delineation, so we need to make sure that we enable our spatial extension tool. So to enable a spatial extension tool, go to the option called customize. Now choose the extension. So now make sure that you are uh, on this, make sure that you click this spatial analyst section. So now close this. So to download the digital elevation model, it will be available in an official website called USGS. So link will be given in the description how to download a digital elevation model from USGS. So now let me show you there are the two types of digital elevation model that is available in USGS. So in SRTM DEM, this is, uh, this is a 30 meter resolution. So let me show you that. So in digital elevation model, we have two different types of data that is SRTM non void field and SRTM void field. So in this specific video, I am using SRTM a void, uh, non void field data. So I am using a SRTM a non void field data. So now let me get back to RGIS. So now go to the option called Arc Toolbox. Now to go to the option called Spatial Analyst. Click this option. So now go to the tool called Hydrology. Now click Fill. So basically we are using a fill tool in order to uh, to fill the gaps in the surface raster to remove the small imperfection in the data. So now uh, let us perform our fill. So to go to the input surface raster, choose your DEM file. So now I have chosen my DEM file and choose your output file location. So now I have chosen my output file location. So now I have chosen my output file location. Now click OK. So now our fill dem has been available in this here. So now we have filled over all the voids in our dem data. So now let me close this. So now let me remove this dem file. So from now now on was we are going to use this fill dem. So next dem we go to the option called next step is we go to the option called arc toolbox. We are going to calculate the flow direction. So now click this. So to calculate the flow direction, let us input our surface raster. That is our DEM file. So let me select fill date. So fill is our DEM file now. So now let us choose our output file location. So now I have chosen my output file location. So now let me click OK. So now we have our flow direction raster in RGIS. So now let me explain uh, the meaning of this flow direction raster. Now let me zoom into uh, this flow direction raster. So now here you can able to view there is a different color representing a different flow direction. So now let me show you that. So each of this number represents the a flow direction. Let me show you that. So here the one represents that our flow direction is towards east and 16 here represents the flow direction towards west and the 64 here the represents the flow direction towards north and 4 here represents the flow direction towards south. So likewise the each of the number here represents the flow direction. So each of the number represents a different flow direction. So likewise the 128 here represents the flow direction is towards uh, towards northeast and 8 represents the flow direction towards uh, southwest. So next we are going to calculate a flow accumulation simply using this tool. So go to this option spatial analyst hydrology and click flow accumulation. So now let me input my flow direction raster. So our flow direction raster is represented this one. This is a flow direction raster. So now let me input my flow direction raster. So now let me click this click flow direction. Now choose the output file location. So now I have chosen my output file location that is a flow direction raster that is a flow accumulation raster. So this represents our flow accumulation raster. So now let me click OK. 
and the study area has a total uh, it has a total area of around 6000 square kilometers so it is a very large area so we are performing a, a watershed delineation for a very large area so now uh, you can able to see we have another raster called flow accumulation raster so flow accumulation raster is represented here so we can able to clearly able to view we have our low and high values so low value starting from 0 to uh, up to up to 88,000 uh, that is around 8,85,222 so values were ranging from 0 to 8,85,222 so the meaning of this number is uh, specifically represents uh, so uh, the number here represents that we are trying to locate the a cell with the maximum flow accumulation so the number with 8,85,222 represents the maximum flow accumulation and similarly the zero here represents the least flow accumulation so you can clearly able to view in this section here the white color indicates the maximum flow accumulation the cell with the maximum flow accumulation so now we can able to make some changes for this appearance of our flow accumulation raster so now let me go to the flow accumulation raster right click go to the properties so now go to the option called symbology so now let me go to the unique values or let me go back to the classified section so we have around five different classes for this uh, specific uh, flow accumulation raster let me uh, make it uh, two two classes so now let us go go to this classify section So now let me change the value of this here. So let me arrange from 0 to around 0 to 10,000. Yes. Now let me okay. Let me uh, make sure. So now I have made a have made a break values from 10,000 0 to 10,000 and from 10,000 to 8 lakh 85,222. So now let me click okay and visualize our change uh, the change we have made. So click OK. So now you can uh, clearly able to view the drainage density clearly here in our flow accumulation raster. Now let me get back to this property section. So let me get back to symbology. Now let me explain the numbers, the meaning of this number. So it basically represents the 10,000 or more cell that is draining into the particular cell. So that cell will be represented as a white color. So 10,000 or less cells will be 10,000 or cells or less will be uh, represented as a black. So white will be representing a 10,000 or more of the cell that draining into another cell will be represented as a white. So basically this white lines here represents that is our streamlines. So in reality it will be a, a river, a river lines or it will be a streamlines. And suppose if you want to increase your density of your river networks, that is our streamlines. So if you want to increase your density of your river network, go to the section called classify and again break value up to 5000. Now let me uh, reduce it to 5000. So now I have reduced to 5000. So now let us visualize the density of our stream network. So click OK and apply. So now you can clearly able to view here some part of the section has the density that is our stream network. The density has been increased. So now let me click OK. Now let us visualize our uh, streamlines of this study region. So you can clearly able to visualize here our streamline network. So now we can clearly able to visualize our river network in this uh, flow direction uh, flow accumulation raster. So these are the different river networks that is uh, in reality it will be our uh, river networks. So the streamline will be represented as a river networks in our reality so well uh, let us choose some watershed for this uh, video so let me select our watershed here so you can clearly able to view there is a bigger watershed that is represented here there is a bigger branching that is clearly uh, you can visualize here so starting from here so in my case I let me choose a specific watershed from this part of this region so you can clearly able to view from this branching there is a it get it uh, so we can locate a watershed uh, here. So this specific represents a watershed. So 
So my catchment, uh, that is my watershed delineation is based on this per particular outlet. So here that is re represented here. So this specific uh, drainage outlet will be our catchment area. So to delineate our watershed boundary, first we need to create a shape file, a point uh, shape file. So based on this drainage outlet, so this is will be our outlet of our watershed. So now let us create a shape file for to delineate our watershed boundary. So go to the catalog and let me choose my, let me create a shape file, right click, new and go to the option called shape file. So now let me uh, rename. So I have renamed as the outlet and feature type is this point. So we are going to use a point data. So that is the point feature. So let me select my coordinate system. Let me. Uh, so I'm going to choose a geographic uh, coordinate system. So I'm going to select WGS 1984. So now click OK. So now click OK. So now we can uh, you can clearly able to in this part of the section we have our uh, shape file of point shape file. So now we're going to use our editor tool. So go to the empty blank section of ArcGIS, right click and choose the editor. So now you can clearly uh, see this. This is our editor. Click this. So now editor is available. So now let me place it here. So click this. Start editing. Now let me choose my uh, point shape file. This is outlet. Outlet is our point shape file. Click this and click OK. So now I'm going to place this uh, point on our uh, drainage outlet. So I'm going to place this point in this part of this uh, in here to delineate our watershed. So to delineate our watershed boundary, we have to place this point in this here. The drain. I'm going to place this point in this part. So let me place the point here. Let me zoom zoom in. Place the point here. So now let me zoom out. So it is clearly indicated, the point is being clearly indicated here. So now again go to the editor, save edits and stop editing. So now we have clearly specified our drainage outlet point here in this section, in this area. So now let me go to the Arc Toolbox section. So let me uh, go to this option called Watershed. So select Watershed Tool. So now let me input my flow direction raster. Make sure that you input your flow direction raster. So this is our flow direction raster. Let me drag and place it here. So I have inserted my flow direction raster. Next input raster or the feature pole point data. So that is which represents our outlet. Uh, outlet. This is our outlet shape file. So click and drag this here. So now uh, pole point field. Make sure that you select the ID field. Now choose your output location. So now I have selected the the name for our name for our watershed. So it is our uh, represented as a watershed, and save as type as a raster data. So it is a raster data set. So now save, and click OK. So now uh, our result has been completed. So it is indicated here. So the watershed is represented uh, in this color. Now let me go to this watershed data. Right click, go to the property section. Now go to the display section and uh, choose your transparency as 50%. So I've chosen my transparency as 50. Now click OK. So now you can clearly able to view the watershed boundary of, of this specific uh, watershed boundary. So you can also change the color of this watershed boundary. Go to the option, click this. So now you can choose your color for your watershed boundary. Now let me select a blue and click OK. So now you can clearly able to visualize our watershed boundary and underlying we have our uh, river networks. So now we have our uh, delineated our watershed boundary. So now we could like to convert our raster data to a polygon. So for that, uh, let me go to this option called search. Now let me search by raster to polygon. Or also you can uh, go to this Arc Toolbox section 
and go to the conversion tools and select from raster from raster and raster to polygon so click this so now let us input our uh, input our raster that is watershed click this and drag into here so now let me choose my output file location so now i have chosen my output file location and uh, it is a shape file so now let me click ok so the so now it has been converted to a polygon so now let me turn off other layers so this is our uh, watershed boundary that is our catchment watershed boundary layer so now let me reduce the transparency of this polygon go to the option called properties and display select the transparency make the transparency to 50 percent so I made 50 now click ok so now you can clearly visualize our watershed boundary it is in polygon and underlying we have our stream networks that is our river networks so now to calculate the area of this watershed all you have to do is let us reproject to a geographic uh, coordinate uh, geographic coordinate system to a projected coordinate system so to calculate the area of this watershed so to do that let me go to this option called search now let us uh, have typed as project so let me click search so here that is our project data management project spatial data from one coordinate system to another click this so now let us input our uh, watershed boundary that is our polygon so raster to polygon so now let me input my raster to polygon into that is our watershed boundary layer so this is our polygon of our watershed boundary so now let me choose my output file location so now I have uh, renamed that uh, chosen my output file location watershed PC, uh, PCS that is projected coordinate system so now let me choose my uh, coordinate system so click this option so now go to this projected coordinate system and choose your so now go to the UTM and uh, from so now select WGS 1984 and select northern hemisphere so my study area is located in north 44 so you can also uh, search your study area by using uh, the specific uh, number so each of this uh, each of the country has its own uh, specific number represented from uh, like this UTO, WGS 1984 UTM zone 44 is my study region so now let me click OK so now uh, let me click OK to reproject to, uh, from uh, geographic uh, coordinate system to a projected coordinate system so to calculate the area of our watershed boundary now click OK so it is running here so now our pro projection has been completed now let us add this data into ArcGIS so make sure that you uh, remember your save location now let me get back to uh, add data so now in the scrap and select our watershed PCS projected coordinate system now add so this is our uh, watershed the project watershed boundary of our projected coordinate system so now let me turn off other layers so now to uh, calculate the area of our watershed boundary so watershed so right click go to the option called open attribute so now let us add a field called area so add field let me name the uh, name as area now make sure that your uh, type is, is float or uh, you can this is a float and uh, data type is as float now click ok so now our field has been added here so now to calculate the area of our uh, watershed uh, watershed all you uh, all you have to do is right click go to the option called uh, calculate geometry so now click s yes. So now choose your property as area and you can choose your desired units. So in my case, I will choose square kilometers. Now let me click this square kilometers and click OK. So now you can clearly able to view here. The area has been mentioned here. That is 2022 square kilometers. That is 2022.75 square kilometers. So this specific watershed has an area of around 2022.75 square kilometers of area. So in this video, we have, we have uh, delineated a watershed boundary and we have reprojected our, our watershed boundary to a projected coordinate system and we have calculated the area of our watershed or catchment area. So thanks for watching and please subscribe to our channel and give us a like.